Good morning. My name is Alexandra Lansky from Yale University, and it's my pleasure to be here today with Dr. Harry Buller from um, Academic Medical Center of Amsterdam, and we're going to be discussing your trial, the Epstein PE study, um, uh, about oral rivaroxaban alone for symptomatic PE. And I wonder if you can give us a little bit of background on your trial. No. Oral rivaroxaban. Rivaroxaban. They're going to make it easier. Okay. Um, no, the, the the background is very simple. As we all know, if you develop an acute deep vein thrombosis of the leg or an acute pulmonary embolism, you need to receive heparin uh, first and as soon as possible. And then we'll kick in with the warfarin, and then after five to ten days, it's warfarin alone. That treatment is very effective. The only thing, it's cumbersome. Uh, you have to inject yourself uh, with a vitamin K antagonist, of course, if you eat broccoli or cranberries or a couple of glasses of wine, it, it, it's everywhere, antibiotics, many, many, many drugs. So the, the, the problem we, we confronted with is not that it's not effective, it's just so cumbersome and, and for some patients uh, really have to go up and down to the lab. So here we set out to use Rivaroxaban, which is an mm -hmm. oral 10A inhibitor, um, and from scratch what we try to do is really replace both low molecular weight heparin and vitamin K. So what we did in this study in pulmonary embolism, 4,800 patients, half of these patients got the standard treatment, low molecular weight heparin for five to 10 days, VKA, and then continued for three, six, or 12 months. In the uh, experimental arm, it was Rivaroxaban. We had good data from Dose Finding and a couple of other um, data in healthy volunteers is that we needed to provide good protection the first three weeks. So in the first three weeks, uh, the patients in the Rivaroxaban got 15 milligram twice a day, so 30 milligram to make sure that the clot silences. Mm -hmm. And then after three weeks, it was switched back to 20 milligram once a day. And this is the whole study. So what are the highlights in terms of the findings? Yeah, so you always look at three things. Right. One is efficacy, and efficacy in this disease is you want to prevent the disease from coming back. So recurrent venous thromboembolism, that's the primary efficacy outcome. As I mentioned, we set out to be as good mm -hmm. because the current treatment is good. So that is called a non-inferiority design, and this is what was clearly shown. So if, if you look at the curves of the two over time, they completely mm -hmm. superimpose them. So that was objective one met. Objective two, there was some suggestion that it might be a little safer. In this study, because it was so large, the patients were followed for a prolonged period of time. In terms of the principal safety, which is the combination of major bleeding and clinically relevant non-major bleeding, mm -hmm. That was 10% in the Riva, 11.4 in the mm -hmm. uh, VKA arm. Mm -hmm. However, the big surprise is that if you look at major bleeding, they really separated right away. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, a 50% reduction in major bleeds. And these are intracranial bleeds, retroperitoneal bleeds. So those are you know, bleeds so we don't like. in favor of river oxaban. Which is, yeah. you know, that's what you expect from yeah. this predictable pharmacokinetic. Mm -hmm. So, works as good. It's a little safer, particularly major bleeding, and much easier to use because you give a fixed dose to everybody. You don't have to get your blood checked. Um, now, this is the Einstein pulmonary embolism study. We already published the Einstein DVT study, mm -hmm. exactly the same design. Mm -hmm. We can now add them together. And that's a, you know, a patient base of 8,200 patients altogether. Right. They are very consistent with each other. So, the bottom line is, Dear patients, dear colleagues, if you have a patient with DVD or a patient with PE, here you have this alternative, simple, rivaroxaban only strategy, which we believe is going to protect your patients uh, in a similar way as what we have today. Right. It's safer and simpler to use. And how about cost? Can you address that? Because I think that's one of the issues with adop oh, yeah, adoption. Of yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, Two things. One, I'm not an expert, uh, right. so I have to be very careful. Second it is we're now witnessing three, four, maybe five of these drugs. So mm -hmm. one of the advantages is that we are going to have some competition right. between all these new anticoagulants. And the last point I'd like to make is if we look at the costs of monitoring warfarin, now warfarin is not expensive, but the whole monitoring, right. um, 
and then if you take the bleeds into perspective, uh, into this uh, perspective, what needs to be done, and which is actually people are doing it, and I'm again, right. I'm not an expert, is if you lead, if you view this from a societal perspective, what does it cost to treat a thousand patients with the current treatments? And of course, the cost of the complications. I mean, intracranial bleed is very expensive. Uh, Retroperitoneal bleed, or being in hospital, which is one or the other. For pulmonary illness, and these patients are in hospital the three, four, five, sometimes a week. Now, with this new therapy, um, you, you can maybe, or you can definitely treat them out of hospital or after one day. If, and all these things need to be figured out, right. and then we'll get the answer. So, what do you think the acceptance is going to be? It sounds like this is. Um you know, in many ways beneficial to the patient, there's better ease of uh, administration, you know, etc. So, um, I'm, I'm not, I'm biased. Uh, we did yeah. the studies. Okay. So somebody else needs to judge that. Yeah. But I can imagine that from a patient point of view, um, this, this has certain attractiveness. There's one caveat which we have to acknowledge, and that is in the old days with vitamin K antagonists, we had the INR to measure mm -hmm. adherence. Right. Um, we are now in the same ballpark as statins and antihypertensive drugs, etc. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be the patients disappear. Um, right. There are tests to monitor, to at least measure. Um, but yes, I, 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 I do think it's quite attractive. Um, it, it will make treatment easier. Um, and we just have to get adapted. Well, I want to thank you, Dr. Boller, for, for coming and joining us today on this interview. Pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. And that concludes our, our interview today.